our debates. And so at this point, we begin to meet the candidates for the first time tonight. To my left is Democrat David Nakbar. And to my right is Republican Jim Alisi. And with that coin toss, Mr. Nakbar, you are going to present the opening statement first. Thank you very much. Throughout this campaign, I've been asking an essential question, and that is, if you do what you've always done, then you'll get what you've always got. So then the question is, so do you like what you got? Now, I'm a businessman and not a career politician, so I tend to go to the numbers. Over the last 10 years, what we've seen is that our state budget has more than doubled, going from $62 billion to over $127 billion. To pay for it, our taxes have gone up 7% each year. Our unemployment is now at the highest rate that it has been in 15 years. And in fact, we've lost over 25,000 jobs right here in Monroe County. We spend more per pupil in education than any other state in the union. And yet, for our high school students, more than half the time, they're not graduating from high school. Now, we also are 47 out of the 50 states in terms of competitiveness and 48 out of the 50 states in terms of job creation. We are number two on one important list, though, the list of the worst states to do business in. Now, Jim Alisi is going to say that he's kept his promise and he's worked hard. But I say, show me the results. Because the results say the job's just not getting done. And I know that we can do so much better. We can do so much better to create jobs and opportunity right here in New York. We can do better to provide health care and quality education. And we can do better to help working families be able to regain control of their lives and make ends meet. But to do all of this, we're going to have to fix Albany. It's broken, and we've had enough. Tonight, I want to talk about how we can fix Albany and how we can truly get results, both here in upstate and throughout the entire state of New York. Mr. Nakbar, thank you. Mr. Releasey. Well, uh, you know, I'm going to use a word that uh, most people don't use these days. I'm a citizen legislator. I'm a small business owner and built a business all across the state. And it was never my primary interest to enter politics. I did it at the local level several years ago when something was impacting my business and my community. And as I grew from a state legislator, or from a county legislator to the state assembly and finally into the Senate, I was also growing a business, building my experience on a parallel track. The experience that I gained, I use in Albany, which is a very, very difficult place to work and has many, many challenges to help bring things back to this district that are vitally important to my citizens that I represent investing in our colleges and in our hospitals, creating high-tech jobs, opportunities for students, building a better future for children that we think will go to school and stay in this community. I work across the aisle, and I've been well known as the kind of guy that reaches out to my Democrat friends. I've got a good relationship with the Rochester delegation, mostly Democrat in the assembly. I've got a good relationship with Governor Patterson. We shared office space on the same floor for quite a while before he became the governor. As an example, when the governor decided that he was going to eliminate the upstate economic development czar, as chairman of that committee, I went directly to Governor Patterson and I said, you need to listen to what I have to say about that. As a result, the governor listened and we now have the upstate development president right here in Rochester, not even in Buffalo as we did have. By reaching across the aisle, by being a citizen legislator with business experience and a desire to serve those people that I represent, I continue to serve in the Senate with your good wishes, and I thank you for the opportunity. All right, gentlemen, we'll begin the questions at this point, and Mr. Alisi, you'll field the first. What one issue or campaign promise made by your opponents would you say needs most consideration? For example, your opponent has challenged your record on state spending, and most recently, saying that you took money from a group that you regularly procure state funding for, and that would be the Rochester International Jazz Festival. Your comments. Well, as you know, that uh, running for office is one of those things that we do every two years, and uh, fundraising is an evil, a necessary evil of doing that. Uh, I represent people in business and labor. I represent people from all walks, right, uh, conservatives, liberals, independents, and many of those people send campaign contributions to my campaign and to my opponent's campaign. 
What I can tell you is I don't have a quarter million dollars like my opponent to put into my campaign coffers. We rely on contributions from people from all walks of life. And that doesn't mean that they have any special interest over my vote or what I do. It simply means that that's the way that the system works right now. And that's one of the reasons that I believe very strongly in campaign finance reform. Make it even. Make it level. Make it work for everybody. Make it fair. Mr. Nakbar. Well, the fact of the matter is, is that we need to have some dramatic change in the way that campaigns are financed. And in fact, I think that one of the worst things that's happening is that uh, one hand can eventually wash the other in the system that we've got. Uh, the fact is that when you've got um, member items which are given out to various organizations, they should not expect anything in return. And unfortunately, what we've seen is this trade-off that goes on between receiving money for a grant and potentially getting campaign contributions on the flip side. That's wrong. That's got to stop. I believe that a member of the legislature, that a member of the Senate, has got to take the higher ground, answer to a higher standard, and just simply say no. The fact of the matter is, is that we really cannot have a situation where uh, any type of member item is perceived as a promise of future support for anything that that organization has for the future. Chance for rebuttal, Mr. Alisi. Well, there's never been any promise on my part. I operate with complete integrity, and, and, and it would be illegal to do anything other than that. But what I can tell you about the JS Festival or another, any other organizations, if they want to invest in my candidacy or Democrat Mayor Bob Duffy, who received $5,000 from them, that's their prerogative under a system that should be reformed and it should be limited. But I can tell you this, that there isn't any single individual organization that can contribute to me or anyone else that can expect any special favors as a result of that. Mr. Nakbar? Well, the, the truth is that Jim receives more campaign contributions coming from organizations and political action committees than individuals. So wanting campaign finance reform, I think, is a laudable objective, but it's kind of newfound religion. Where was he 10 years ago or even two years ago and calling for it at the same time? I think holding the standard, Jim is basically saying no, returning the money, giving it right back, and then taking the higher ground. Let's stay with our eye on the microscope and Mr. Nye.